pastor's soulmate, best friend, and the glue that keeps the family and ministry together. She was born in St. Louis, Missouri, and raised in Omaha, Nebraska, by her late mother, Emma Shirley. She worked for Northwest Airlines for 17 years, and she retired as a guardian ad litem with the 4th Judicial District for Hennepin County, where she advocates for youth. She also worked at Harriet Tubman Women's Shelter, where she advocated for women and children. She is dedicated is a dedicated usher, part of the women's ministry, directs the youth program for the art, uh, adults reaching kids, if you don't know that acronym, works with the youth of NCBC and the food show. Sister Annie is an inspiration and an example to women everywhere who are balancing responsibilities both inside and outside the home. This is a fact since she is a wife, mother of 17, and grandmother of 23. When asked what her favorite scripture is, she stated, 1 Samuel 3. Sister Annie is committed to empowering women, children, and families to connect and grow strong with the foundation of faith in Jesus Christ. In closing, when we thank God for our pastor, we must give him thanks for two. For when your husband came to us, God also sent you. As pastor's wife must be many things, you have many hats to wear. And we say thanks for all you do and lift you up in prayer. You adjust your life to meet the needs of your husband's congregation, and it seems that you can always cope with most any situation. Your presence, blessings, all of us who knows you from day to day. As our pastor's wife, you are serving God in a fine and worthy way. New Creation Baptist Church family, thanks.
Lee McKenzie was born on October 23, 1957, in Minneapolis, Minnesota. He is the youngest of three sons born to Miss Edna McKenzie. Brothers Kevin and Dwayne Temple are deceased. He is the devoted husband of Annie McKenzie and proud father of 17 and the proud grandfather of 23. Pastor McKenzie graduated from Washburn High School, attended the University of Minnesota Minneapolis College of Liberal Arts, and received a Master of Divinity degree from Luther Seminary in May 2002. Pastor McKenzie received an honorary Doctor of Divinity degree from St. Thomas Christian College in May 2009. In June 1996, Pastor McKenzie was ordained a deacon by Pastor Gerald Joyner at Redeemer Missionary Baptist Church in Minneapolis. In May 1997, he answered the call to the ministry and preached his initial sermon titled, You Can Run, But You Can't Hide, and licensed as a minister by Pastor Darwin Harris. In April of 2001, he was ordained a minister by Pastor Alfred Harris Sr. at Redeemer Missionary Baptist Church. In June 2001, Pastor McKenzie and family removed their membership from Redeemer Missionary Baptist Church and started ministering to the elderly at Walker Methodist Nursing Home. He was compelled to spend the last months of his grandmother Mary Boone's life preaching the gospel and singing hymns of praise to those suffering from dementia. Through this fellowship, Pastor McKenzie founded New Creation Baptist Church. Two months after the death of his grandmother, New Creation Baptist Church began sharing the worship facilities at Epiphany Lutheran Church. And in August of 2013, New Creation Baptist Church became owners of the building. Pastor McKenzie has led members of NCBC to many accomplishments. In 2013, the purchase of the building and property, adding a new roof to the church building and painting of offices, the youth sanctuary and youth center, the expansion of the food shelf, where we serve over 1,900 individuals, over 500 families, and distribute over 32,000 pounds of food each month. He also started the senior food delivery ministry, where we deliver boxes of food to about 28 households, and the number is still rising. When Pastor McKenzie was asked to make a statement about entering the ministry and pastoring, he stated, my goal in life is to serve God by preaching, teaching, and reaching the lost for Jesus Christ. Pastor McKenzie and his wife Annie were nominated by Senator Norm Coleman in 20, 2005 as Angels of Adoption for the state of Minnesota and received this prestigious award in Washington, D.C. In the past 31 years, they have welcomed into their home over 100 foster children and they have adopted seven. She's 
facilitated multiple women's conferences, um, participated in multiple women's days at the churches, at the churches, churches, um, churches, and also um, I've done many of youth events and programs. Um, she's a mother of three, and some of you may know this, may not know that, but she's a twin, and she has five sisters. And uh, of the six of them, four of them are then a minister. And her most important role she has is my wife. <laughs>
do something hard. I know it's going to be hard, but I'm going to try to stick to what I have. Amen? Amen. But what I'd like to do is I just want to take you through a story as I um, give the sermon today. But before I even open up in prayer, I want to reverence and acknowledge my mother-in-law for being in the house today. Thank you. Um, so this is um, Pastor McKinsey and Sister Annie's 21st anniversary. Amen. We thank the Lord for the faithfulness. Amen? Amen. So if you would join me in prayer. Lord, I just bless your name today. And Father, I thank you for the service thus far. I thank you for the choir, the praise team, Lord God, for yielding to your spirit and singing. We thank you, Lord God, for the word of the Lord that came through the deacon, Lord God. We praise and thank you, Lord God, for all of your people that have gathered. And most of all, we thank you for the shepherd of this house and his wife. Lord, we thank you for this occasion. And we ask, Lord, that the word of the Lord that you have given me, God, that it will fall on fertile ground today, Father. Lord, God, we're asking for your confirmation from the word of the Lord. We ask, Lord, God, that our hearts will be prepared to hear what thus saith the Lord. And we can take the word, apply it, and use it for your kingdom building. And Lord, we bless your name and we thank you that it is so. If you put your hands together. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Put your hands together. If you would remain standing while we just read the scripture. And I have a few scriptures today, but I'm going to ask you just to stand for the first scripture. The thing says, keeping, keep on shepherding, watching, and serving God's flock. Amen? Amen. Oh, we got it up there? Okay, let's see. It's not the same translation I have, so we'll just go ahead. Go ahead. We're going to all read together. Amen? Amen. All right. 1 Peter 5, 2 and 3. Shepherd the flock of God, which is among you, serving as overseers. Not by compulsion, but willingness. Not by the son of the but in the And all this being the Lord's own goals and trust is you. But be an example to the flock. Amen. Amen. So I had a different translation, so that's why I just said, let's go ahead and read that together. But also in that same chapter, if you go down to chapter um, verse number 10, it reads, and the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I thought it was important to add that as I was reading through that chapter before, the, the chapter before and the chapter afterwards. I thought it was important to add that so that I would just let you know, Pastor and Sister Annie, that after you have suffered just a little while, just a little while, that God, hallelujah, will restore you, will make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Amen? And so in these passages, that we just read. It's talking to the pastor. It's talking to the shepherds. It's talking to the elders. And Peter is just letting us know in the passage that if you're going to be a pastor, if you're going to be an elder, if you're going to care for the flock, then you're going to have to suffer as Christ suffered. Amen? I want to share a short story with you. And as I was reading this story, it was kind of hard to pronounce the name. 
So I decided that I'm just going to shorten that name for the sake of continuing on with the sermon. Amen? Amen. So it's a short story. And as I begin to share the story, Pastor and Sister Annie, I just want you just to, when you're able to give witness to what is being said, just put your hand up. Just be a witness. Hallelujah. And I think that as we go along, there's going to be those of us out here that are going to be able to just be a witness. Amen. So the story that I want to share comes from the book of Samuel, the second book of Samuel, the ninth chapter, verses 1 through 7. And I'm just going to tell you the story, but I'm asking that you will go back and read this, amen, on your own. And so this is the story of David, King David, and Melchizedek. I know I said it wrong. So what I'm going to do is just call him Mel. And we also know that he is the son of Jonathan. Amen. He is the grandson of King Saul. Amen. So do we got that? So when I say little male, we know who we're talking about. Amen. Amen. But what I honestly believe when I was reading this story is that God is saying in this passage that um this is a Lodabar experience. Amen? And I believe for New Creation Baptist Church that God is saying there's a shift that's coming. How many can give a witness that there's a shift that's coming? Oh, I see some hands. Hallelujah. That there's a shift that's coming. And I think that we have already experienced a shift with COVID. Amen? Didn't it shift there. Some of us didn't even know what was going on or how we were even going to come through it or if we were going to come through it. But you can look at your neighbor today and say, I made it through the shit. Oh, bless God, bless God. So to give some backstory about this story with David and little male, when he was about five years old, his father, Jonathan, and his grandfather, Saul, were killed in a battle with the Philistines. The word of their death reached little male's nurse. And so she grabbed him and she began to run with him to get away. And as she was running, she slipped and she fell. And when she fell, the Bible says that little male was crippled from both feet. He couldn't walk any longer. So now in those days, it was customary and necessary that when one king was overthrown, his entire family was supposed to be killed to keep from the future uprising occurring. And so we learn in the story that all of Jonathan's sons and Saul's were killed. And so who was going to take over this throne? Are you following me? All right, all right. Remember, he is lame. He is crippled now. And so who is going to take over? So now, little male, they put him in hiding. Because they didn't know what to do with him. So as he went into hiding, he went into this place called Lodabar. Can you say Lodabar? Lodabar. And Lodabar, what it means is not having or no pastor. It was a town of forgetting, forgotten people, including little male. It was a town for the unskilled, the ignored people, uneducated, outcasts from society, those who people would scorn and mock, write off, tell them that you'll never amount to anything. You'll never be anything. Hmm. 
And those that we see even now and we don't even pay attention to. Those are the people, the lonely people that you will find in Lone Rock. The story seems so short, but it has so much power in it. Yeah. And so what this story will tell us is about the love and the reflection of God's love. So David promised Jonathan that he will show grace to his descendants. And so when you skip down, hallelujah, to verse number one in the ninth chapter of 2 Samuel, David asked a question. Is there anyone still left of the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Yeah. How many know that God will use your trials? Amen. God will use your testing. You're going to go through some things. Hallelujah. Yeah. You're going to go through some things. Hallelujah.
in the house of Saul that I can show kindness to. That's something that we're missing, saints of God, in this world is showing kindness. Yeah, because sometimes when you think it's all about you, sometimes when you turn it over and say it's me, and they're not doing this for me, and they're not doing that for me, and we forget about the kindness and to show the love of Christ where we go. And so there was a servant that was in the house of Saul and said, yes, there is one left. There is one left, and his name is Little Male. And you will find him in Lodabar. And so David said, go and get him and bring him to me. And so he went looking for Little Male in Lodabar. And then he found him and he told him, the king is asking for you. The king has need of you. And he began to get scared. But when you read in the commentary, it says by this time years had passed and little male was 13 years old. He was still lame, still couldn't walk, still was living in Lodabar, and people had really forgotten him and put him away. All right. And so the servant brought him to the house of David. And when David saw him, then David began to tell him how he knew him. Because David and Jonathan were friends. And little man thought, surely he was afraid. The Bible says that fear came over him. Because he thought for sure that David was going to kill him. Because of the custom of that day. But David said to him, I'm going to find this. So that y'all can get it. What David said. So David said to him in verse 7, Don't be afraid, for I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather Saul, and you will eat at my table. God said that 
the church will be restored. Yes. That the church will flourish more than you can even imagine. that the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed you to proclaim good news to the poor he has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of the sight of the blind to set the oppressed free and that is found in Luke 4 and 18 and I listened to you preach on last Sunday pastor and I listened to you speak about signs and wonders and that you would stand there and you wanted to see that your shadow, hallelujah, would heal those that were afflicted and those that had disease and those that were sick. And I'm telling you, it just gave witness to what the Lord is saying. I'm telling you, God said New Creation Baptist Church, there's a shift. In closing, Pastor and Sister Annie, in the book of Psalms, the 23rd chapter to be exact, remember in your Lodabar moment that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He made me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadows of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. They conquer me. Thou prepareth a table before me. Thou prepareth a table before me. Thou prepareth a table before me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely. in the house of the Lord forever. Hallelujah. Do you see? Do you see? Do you see that little man came out of Lodabar? And he came out of Lodabar very victorious. He came out of Lodabar a rich young man. Hallelujah. And God provided for him. And so I tell you today, Pastor McKinsey, you're coming out of Lodabar, hallelujah. And the word of the Lord said that you will sit at the table, hallelujah, in the presence of your enemies, in the presence of the naysayers, in the presence of all those, hallelujah, all right. that then you do think, hallelujah, that you will last 21 years. But God said that you will sit in the presence, hallelujah. And not only that, but surely we will be with you forever. I promise you today, hallelujah, that what the Lord is saying, hallelujah, there's a shift that's coming, hallelujah, and I feel the shift, hallelujah, but not only the shift is coming, hallelujah, but we all can attest, we all can witness, hallelujah, that pastor has been that example in Lodabar for us. With you while you were in Lodabar. Those of you that needed him to come to the hospital. Those of you that needed him, hallelujah, to come to the courthouse. Those of you that needed him to answer the phone in the midnight hour when somebody else.